Welcome everyone to the Canadian Nurses Association webinar series, Progress and Practice. This webinar is about leadership and system transformation from a community health nursing perspective. My name is Aidan Hamza. I'm a policy advisor at the Canadian Nurses Association and I will be hosting this webinar. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer your questions, which you can type into the Q&A box that you see at, to the right of the slide. We will address as many questions as time allows. The certificate of participation will be emailed to you along with the link to the recording of this webinar. And now a little bit about our presenter, Dr. Josephine Itoa. Josephine is a professor and Loye da Silva Research Chair in Public Health Nursing at the University of Ottawa. As well, she is a senior investigator with the Center for Research on Health and Nursing and a founding member and past president of the Health Association of African Canadians. Her research program includes studies on health equity, perinatal health, HIV AIDS, nurses' work-life balance, and community health nursing. Welcome, Josephine. I'll now hand this presentation over to you. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, so I'll start with our webinar outline. Uh, I'll discuss uh, the learning outcomes for this uh, particular webinar, uh, the context of healthcare in Canada, system transformation, community health nursing, the work we do, and leadership, and what does leadership look like in community health nursing. And I'll finish with some concluding remarks. Next slide, please. And, and so my discussion uh, would, I would talk about uh, system transformation. I think I've talked about this, so we can move to the next slide, please. So in terms of the context of healthcare, when we talk about the Canadian healthcare system, we're talking about a system that's created in the 60s, at a time when health discourse emphasized biomedical cause and effect and negative life choices. But we know today that we understand um, health, uh, the ways in which we understand health is shaped by so many uh, environmental issues, social issues. And the decisions we make, the behavior we engage in is informed by this. We also know today that we promote an authentic community engagement and transparency in decision making. That citizens expect the system to respect their values and preferences and to facilitate their access to care. And so it, it becomes difficult to align the values in which it was created and the beliefs people have today that they want to be involved. We have uh, the uh, patient engagement movement, community, meaningful community engagement movement. These are all issues that impact on the system. Next slide, please. Um, I thought I'd start with this uh, syst uh, systematic review or scoping review that's done by uh, Canadian researchers from the University of Montreal, actually. Uh, looking at the challenges that face health system today globally. And in their uh, review, they found that, that some of the frequently researched sectors were mental health, infectious diseases, primary health care. They also looked at the most frequently studied uh, population. And again, they found 23% uh, of those most frequently studied were elderly people, 21% were people living in remote or uh, poor areas, 15% um, visible and uh, ethnic minorities, and then we have 15% children and adolescents. They also looked at um, the most reported challenges of healthcare. Human resource came on top, leadership and governance was next, health service delivery was uh, actually the top one. When you look at the percentages, 24%. And so health service delivery challenges were more often examined in countries with high human development index categories, so more developed countries, while human resources challenges attracted more attention within the low uh, human development index uh, category. Next slide, please. I also uh, looked at um, the recent uh, PIHA, Public Health Agency of Canada, a key health inequities report here in Canada. And you see that 
significant health inequalities were observed for those with low socioeconomic status, indigenous people, sexual and racial and ethnic minorities, immigrants, and people living with functional limitations such as uh, physical or mental impairment where those that were significantly affected by these inequities. And in response, you see here that the Chief Public Health Officer, Dr. Theresa Tam, states that many of these inequalities are shaped by structural conditions. That's where the change needs to happen, at uh, the structural level, so the system level. Next slide, please. And so uh, the inequalities we're talking about leads us to the issues around system transformation, why this is so important. I cite here Michael Momo, one of our global gurus in uh, the, the discussions around social determinants of health. It says the unequal distribution of health damaging experience is not natural. It is the result of toxic combination of all social policies and programs unfair economic arrangement and bad politics that's leading to some of those inequities. So you can see uh, uh, the funny cartoon here that the sick person in the hospital bed said, we've run every test we could think of and the result shows that you are out of money. So it's poverty. That's really the reason this person is in bed. Uh, next slide, please. So the ties of system transformation then is driven by these um, inequalities or inequities in the healthcare system that is creating discomfort even for those of us who work there. And so we have to be uh, to take accountability to addressing this through our own leadership, through the collaboration with other teams leading these strategic uh, collaborations, through knowledge being more creative in terms of how we generate knowledge and what we use that knowledge for. And as an autonomous profession like nursing, we are well positioned to uh, be part of that leadership team for the system transformation. Next slide, please. And so what is this system transformation? It involves critical assessment and change of the system to improve its efficiency and delivery. We, I just thought I mentioned a couple of examples here. I'm sure we're all seeing the changes that are happening in our different provinces, in different parts of the country where we are, uh, whether it involves critical assessment or not. In Ontario, we just had uh, the recent announcement of uh, Toronto Public Health losing about a billion dollar in their uh, funding. So serious cuts that's going to impact on how uh, service is delivered. It would impact on uh, disease prevention, immunization, uh, surveillance and monitoring. Uh, all of those would be uh, public health issues will be impacted. In Manitoba here, they, they're going through their own significant change in terms of uh, moving away from a system of eight independent healthcare system uh, to this shared uh, health uh, service where province-wide organization will be created or is created now to support centralized kind of services in Nova Scotia. They've moved from nine uh, health authority uh, to uh, in Nova Scotian health authority, which we're finding is not doing what it's supposed to do. It cannot handle the capacity of the health needs there. Um, and you just see all of these changes happening uh, across the country. And that's why it's so important for us as public health or community health nurses to begin to position ourselves to be a key part of this uh, change that is happening all around the country. Next slide, please. Oh, what happened there? Okay, I, I thought I, I, I brought in one example here from BC as well. Um, this uh, best article worked on uh, some of the system change uh, in BC and they looked at managing the system itself. It's interesting because their own approach was to look at the context in which the system is happening. Um, so uh, shared clinical leadership, strengthening knowledge of uh, management and also strategic communication and opportunities for networking were all areas that were targeted in that uh, change. Saskatchewan Health System also have um, 
work that's happening there. And you can see here uh, some of um, the simple rules they develop for their own um, system transformation. They talked about blended, um, blending designated leadership with distributed leadership, uh, establishing feedback loops and, and attending to history, but also engaging, engaging physicians and also including patients and family was interesting. Uh, they didn't quite uh, highlight nursing uh, as such. Next slide, please. In this particular article, I mean, and so um, what is leadership? When we talk about leadership in community health nursing, uh, many of our community health leaders, I cite uh, Claire Baxter here, um, have talked about leadership. Uh, if a whole thesis looked at uh, leadership and leadership attributes and, and the many dimensions of leadership. Uh, and so leadership uh, influence is influence that moves individuals, groups, communities and system towards achieving goals that will result in better health. Uh, it is an important element of public health action on the determinants of health. It is the ability of that individual to influence, motivate and enable others to contribute towards the effectiveness and success of their community or the organization in which they work. And also it's about inspiring people to craft and achieve a vision and goals. Uh, CPHA, the Canadian Public Health Association, describes the community health nurses as leaders of change to system in society that support health. Um, next slide, please. Uh, CNA, the Canadian Nurses Association, also acknowledges the potential that nurses have in terms of our large, being the largest uh, workforce, uh, the strength we have in our numbers. And I see that as also something that's very relevant to uh, community health nurses. Uh, the gift of the numbers we have to position ourselves at different arenas where decisions are made about uh, system transformation or system change uh, gives us that uh, ideal position to be able to uh, have influence uh, Community Health and Nursing of Canada, the association itself is also taking some responsibility for some of this system transformation. Um, actually, this particular uh, seminar is one of its three leadership seminar plan for 2019 uh, by the Institute of uh, the Leadership Institute in partnership with CNA to advance the integration of leadership competencies for public health practice in Canada. Um, and they do have the, the full uh, report uh, at the, on the website. You can reach it at this uh, link. Next slide, please. And I thought I also position it for us to really see what the focus of this leadership in community health nursing to start with also where we are located in terms of the work we do as community health nurses. Um, so, I cite the work of our colleague here, Falk Raphael, who says that community health nursing practice occurs at that intersection where social and uh, societal attitudes, community uh, government policies, and people's life meet and create a moral imperative, not only to attend to the health needs of the public, but also to change the social conditions contributing to poor health. That is to engage in social justice. Next slide, please. And so uh, the work of community health nursing leadership for system transformation starts with commitment to social justice and the use of a critical lens to discover those unnatural causes for poor health. It requires an in-depth understanding of that systemic or structural and attitudinal barriers that, mo that are most in complicit in creating inequities in health outcomes. This kind of approach inspires us to go for upstream, uh, 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 to go far upstream, asking why something is happening, to whom is happening, and why it's happening. So um, it challenges us uh, to to really to challenge the behavioral approach to health promotion and to embrace the social environmental approach to promoting the health of the population at large. 
Next slide, please. And so I, I, critical social theory lens is a vital tool for community nursing leadership. It serves as a magnifying glass that exposes those unseen sources of inequities. It also provides that tool to go upstream and carry out intersectional analysis that is very necessary to truly have a, a change that is grounded in social justice that can be sustained. Next slide, please. And uh, so community health nurses, nursing leaders who use social justice lens to influence policy and system change um, are actually getting at some of these issues that we talk about. So CNA um, in 2010 reminded us that social justice is both a means to an end and an end in itself. And so for our nurses, engaging in social justice is an ethical imperative, especially at a time when we are talking about the report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada that points to uh, a leadership that must address the legacy of colonization on the well being of Canada's indigenous people and community health nurses that is right within our mandate. Next slide, please. And I thought I'd just put this image that we're also familiar with to remind us sometimes when we're talking about equity, but not really talking about the systemic structures or those structures. Uh, structural uh, barriers that we need to target. We may think about providing those individual level uh, strategies or interventions. And so you can see in the first slide there when we're talking about equality, everyone gets the, the same uh, level of stool to uh, be able to see the game. You can see the, uh, the person at the right cannot see. And then when you talk about even inequity, or we're addressing, treating people equitably. You can see that we've given the person who needs more, more. But when you do not take the critical lens or the social justice lens to look at the system level, sometimes we never notice that defense is still the bigger barrier here. And in the last uh, picture there, you can see where defense is removed and everyone is on the same level and they can see from their own level. I'm hoping that as we engage in system transformation, we're constantly looking at defenses that's blocking people from um, being able to assess healthcare, from getting the education they need, from getting the employment they need to be able to assess healthcare. Next slide, please. And so I want to again emphasize that need to uh, go beyond our level to go upstream to be able to look at the system change that needs to happen. So leadership for system transformation require building knowledge, skills, and competencies to address upstream issues. It includes competencies to formulate, shape, and influence public policy and create that system change. Uh, so leadership for system transformation should identify root causes of inequities engage diverse stakeholders, analyze those structural determinants, and, and really use those analysis to inform the policy that will be developed. Next slide, please. I want to use the next few slides to just talk about some of the things happening here in Canada. And so nurse, uh, nursing, community nursing leadership is grounded, that is grounded in social justice and critical social theory is necessary throughout the system, whether we're working at the point of care or we're working at higher administrative role, uh, we need to demonstrate leadership that embraces the social justice approach and uses a critical social theory lens to engage in our work at this level. I would use this for uh, key areas, innovative practice, education, research, and collaborative practice to talk about these different areas in the next few slides. Next slide, please. So our uh, community health nursing leaders are said that uh, 
public health nurses are well positioned to play a leadership role in addressing the complex health issues and social determinants um, that are, affect our communities using the social justice lens. Again, I cite Claire here, I cite uh, Cheryl uh, Kusak and, and Ruth Schofield that have all been doing uh, work in this area. I see that one of the things that's actually uh, in influencing the work that we're doing in terms of uh, leadership in community health nursing is that vibrant environment that is being created by the community health nurses of Canada as a national voice uh, for nurse, uh, community health nursing across Canada. Um, I, when I was working on this presentation, I just thought about uh, that unique uh, ceremony I noticed last year when we went for the community health nurses conference in Regina and that exchange or public expression of sharing of power between uh, CHNC and CINA, the, the Canadian Indigenous Nurses Association, getting into this partnership in a very non-traditional non ceremony way where they, they, they actually just shared, um, talked about how they see themselves working together as partners to address the issues um, that affect us as community health nurses. I see that as a true uh, leadership and, and uh, showing that collaboration. Chief nursing officers, um, their positioning in organization is also seen as another step forward to uh, make sure public health and community health nursing voices are represented at high uh, level organizational decision making platform. The safeguarding of the community health nurses of Canada uh, standards of practice is another important step that has been demonstrated in terms of leadership. Um, the, the new standard will be launched at uh, the annual conference next month in St. John, New Brunswick. And I see that as another a platform to influence a system transformation. The strategic academic service and intersectoral collaboration CHNC is uh, involved in, it's also another way. Uh, one example is the memorandum of understanding de developed with the University of Ottawa to work uh, with the lawyer, the Silver Research Chair in uh, Community Health Nursing. Um, I see that I'm being involved even in the advisory board of that chair to help drive uh, the agenda for research uh, in that uh, platform. I see that as uh, the unique kinds of collaboration we need to influence education practice in research. Next slide, please. Also, the intimate knowledge of uh, health care, but also disease prevention and health promotion that we have as community health nurses. I think this is that ideal position is so well put uh, by this particular nurse in one of CHNC's report where uh, one of the people interviewed said, the advantage that public health nurses have is we are in the homes, we are in the community, and we see what's happening. Uh, we've got that knowledge base to move it up. And so if we can bring that knowledge base that this nurse is talking about to those different platforms, we understand what's happening in home care. We understand what's happening even in clinics before the baby is born with the immunizations, the uh, opioid overdose, the cannabis issues and the clinics. We understand all of those uh, uh, knowledge. We have intimate knowledge of those issues. And if we can be present at those decision-making table to bring these stories and bring these issues, I think we will have impact in terms of systemic change. Next slide, please. Another key area that has been identified in the literature is organizational culture. Leadership helps shape culture. In turn, culture shapes leadership. They both drive performance, I'm citing here, quoting uh, CHNC's report. Leaders influence an organization's culture and in turn its long-term effectiveness. And so leaders set the agenda. They are seen as role model and people look up to their leaders to see if their actions are consistent with the organization values. And so this again points to our strategic positioning in the organizations we work at, whether we are at the point of care or frontline, or we are in higher administrative role, we can influence the culture that's happening or what's being said, the action that people are taking, whether they are aligned with the vision or not. Next slide, please. Oh, oh 
something. Okay. So uh, again, how do we sustain those uh, the change, um, the organizational cultural change? Um, this uh, particular author cite uh, the guiding principles to sustaining those change. So it's one thing to position ourselves to be able to uh, influence that organizational change, and it's another thing to sustain it. And sustaining it requires alignment on vision and action, uh, making the change incremen incremental within a more comprehensive uh, transformation strategy, uh, fostering distributed leadership, promoting staff engagement, and uh, they create creating collaborative relationship. Context is also a key part that needs to be paid attention in terms of power distribution and also how pre-existing values and belief may engage people's ability to be ready for to engage in the new change. Next slide, please. And so in terms of education, education has been identified as a key part. It's a, so leadership is a core component of public health nurses and nursing leadership capacity development is a priority. And that is why uh, the Community Health Nurses of Canada Leadership Institute is collaborating with CNA to do this seminar as part of, um, again, engaging with community health nurses across Canada and, and we're looking up to you to be able to give us feedback uh, in terms of next step. Are there other topics that we should be focusing on as we engage in building this nursing and leadership capacity within our discipline? Targeted areas of public health nursing um, leadership education um, have been identified as leadership itself, management, communication, and innovation. Next slide, please. Um, I, I found this quite interesting as I was uh, looking at leadership education. This is uh, some uh, work, work done by a group of uh, researchers in Harvard that really highlighted the need for specialist, for specialist training uh, in population health. He said uh, there is a need for specialists in the health of populations prepared to at least the same level of professional competence as physicians dealing with the sickness of an individual. So we need people uh, that are educated, uh, that, can that can actually diagnose the problem with public health and be able to deal with that. Um, next slide, please. Ah, and this talks about uh, leadership through uh, research. So research is another way that we can demonstrate this leadership. We need to be able to gather the evidence that we need to inform a practice change, to inform system change. Next slide, please. So um, through research, we'll be able to measure the problems that pledges, we'll be able to evaluate the interventions that are currently happening, whether it's in health promotion, in uh, whether it's in disease prevention, we'll be able to increase the knowledge base and to develop the workforce that has good understanding of the social determinants of health and to also raise public awareness about the social determinants of health. As we commonly hear, what gets measured gets done. So if it's not measured, then it's not done. So we must learn to be able to uh, measure to be able to not only measure, but describe the work that public health nurses do and raise awareness about it so that the public also understands the, the significance of the work public health nurses or community health nurses do um, to be able to be advocate for these changes. So when they hear of a billion dollar being caught from Toronto uh, public health, maybe the public would speak up as well when they have the evidence in front of them. Next slide, please. Collaborative partnership is the other key area that requires uh, uh, leadership uh, attention. So community health nurses need to secure their place at the policy arena with other partners. Systemic transformation requires strategic partnership among health professionals, government and non-government agencies, with nurses as one of the key leaders. And so this partnership must magnify the marginalized voices, those that have been historically marginalized. It must leverage diverse set of skills and expertise for this equitable outcome. Next slide, please. 
So uh, community, uh, community engagement is key to this. Community members play a vital role in advancing health equities and efforts to transform the system must engage them authentically. System transformation should be driven by the knowledge, voices, and experiences of those who are directly impacted by health inequities. Nothing about us without us is for us. And so community engagement is central to system transformation. Next slide, please. And so uh, in conclusion, co uh, Health equity work informed by social justice and critical social theory lens is an integral part of system transformation in community health nursing. And as community health nursing leaders, we must inspire others from the health and non-health sectors to develop collaborations anchored in social justice to target how we conduct research, how we educate nurses, how we engage in policy work, how we plan and implement culturally safe and responsive programs and services to meet the needs of diverse communities in Canada. I want to leave you uh, with some reflective questions. Next slide, please. As community health nursing leaders, what role do you want to play in health system reform, uh, transformation? Who do you need to influence? Who can be your allies? What specific actions can you take? Thank you. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, there is an erosion of public health nursing roles in Canada. What are some leadership strategies to address this? That is the first question that we received uh, prior to the presentation. Dr. Toa? Okay, thank you. Um, I think, um, as I just uh, presented, there are so many, there are many ways that we can begin to address this erosion of public health nursing uh, roles in Canada. Um, the use of research evidence to raise awareness about the work that public health nurses do and to advocate for resources is one way that we can talk, we can raise awareness about this issue and to address this erosion. I think we also need to meaningfully engage the community to bring to, to talk about these issues. And, and being visible at policy arena and all of those different um, decision-making platform is a key part. Quite often as public, uh, community health nurses, we say, oh, we were not invited. I want to cite uh, uh, one of our nurse leaders, uh, Marlene, Dr. Marlene Smadu, who said, if you are not invited to the table, create your own table and invite them. Invite them to your own table. And I think we, we need to begin to do that. Uh, we invite ourselves to the table when doors are closed. Sometimes it might require you going through the uh, window to get into those platforms. And if you're still not accepted at the table, then we need to create our own tables and begin to invite those decision makers to our own table to discuss the significance of the role nurse, public health nurses and community health nurses in general, including home health, play uh, in, in the health of Canadians. Thank you, Josephine. Uh, we'll now continue with the discussion portion of the webinar. Uh, if you haven't already, please type your questions into the Q&A text box that you see to the right of the slide. The second question uh, is, how do you encourage community health nurses in primary care who have tremendous workload to engage in leadership? Leadership, like I said, is at all levels. Leadership is visible even at the point of care 
leadership is visible at higher administrative level. So even at uh, the uh, at the point of care when nurses are busy at that point, we need to begin to advocate for resources for those nurses to be able to lead even at that level. Whether it's policy change, whether it's the use of evidence in their uh, practice, and, and, and those beginning leadership can be transformed into bigger ideas. And we also need those people in position of leadership position, like the chief nursing officers, to begin to recognize the need for leadership at the point of care. So they can also advocate for resources to allow nurses who are at the point of care or frontline to be able to participate, whether it's in those uh, committee work, can those meetings be scheduled in ways that those nurses can participate? maybe relieving each other. So we have to be creative in terms of how we seek to engage nurses at all levels in leadership, because that's how we're going to inform the leadership, the tra system transformation, by engaging those who are at the point of care, who understands the everyday realities of the public health nurses and people in the community face. Thank you, Josephine. Our next question is around nursing education. It reads, I teach nursing education in a university and students are much more inter interested in acute care nursing than public or community health. How can we inspire nursing students and new nursing, uh, and those new to nursing, to have a passion for this role of nurses? That's an excellent question. I, I had the same question and recently asked one of my graduate students to actually uh, do her thesis examining um, undergraduate nursing students. Um, perspectives on a career in community health nursing. And yes, we're having the same issue across the country. We have to be more creative in terms of helping undergraduate, especially nursing students to see what nursing is about, to understand truly what community health nursing is about. Because they talk about the social determinants of health they're all going to the gym, but somehow they're not linking some of these health promotion initiatives as nursing. They only see nursing as being in acute care, being in intensive care unit, and walking through a complex technology as nursing. And how would this happen in our educational program? I think the pedagogy of teaching, what we teach what we, and how we teach needs to reflect these changing needs. Are we introducing nursing courses early enough, community health nursing courses early enough in our programs? Are there things we need to do in terms of the innovation around our pedagogy of teaching? I think we need to think about that as an organization. Uh, we need to collaborate uh, with CASN, uh, the Canadian Association of Schools of Nursing, uh, to come up with creative ways of engaging our students early in, in, in this education process. Uh, one of the uh, documents I cited in this presentation is uh, from uh, University, University of Victoria um, that talks about the, the need to educate our undergraduate students on leadership in nursing. So we need to start not just leadership, but community health nursing and the importance of that. Thank, Thank you, Josephine, that's a, a great point. Our next question um, states, what can CNA do to support community health nursing leadership with communities on these essential issues um, around social, a social justice perspective? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, another good question. I think the work has already begun. What CNA is doing right now to collaborate with the Community Health Nurses of Canada to put on this webinar. And, and evaluating it and, and seeing what is the next step in terms of building leadership. Uh, CNA already has a great document here on uh, leadership. They've identified some of the key competencies that leadership that is needed by nursing leaders. And I think that we need to take some of these, uh, you, you, point, you listed eight uh, skills that are needed, are essential for nurse leaders. Uh, for 2020, 2020 is next year. Uh, we need to look at this and how it complements the leadership competencies for public health practice in Canada 
and, and, and see how we can walk this into indicators that actually inform the work we do as leaders, whether it's at the point of care or at higher uh, level administration and, and system level. Thank you, Josephine. Uh, our next question uh, is a little bit more specific. How do you see the role of community health nurses in promoting early detection of cancers? I see uh, the role of community health nurses as part of, that, that's a key part of what we do, promotion of health, prevention of disease, prevention of cancer is like any disease, prevention of disease, and I see community health nursing should have a key role to play in that. And it's part of, could be part of the erosion of public health nursing or community health nursing roles in Canada we're talking about, and we need to be able to uh, make ourselves again more visible in terms of playing that role, including in the prevention or early detection of cancer. Thank you. Uh, our next question uh, states, in most provinces, new graduates find it difficult to gain employment in public health. What are the resources available to support these nurses who are interested in community nursing practice, but experience difficulty in joining the workforce? Another excellent question. That is a big one that I think uh, we need to, uh, again, engage uh, CHNC. And perhaps we need to have a, a focused discussion with, say, the, the chief nursing officers that work in public health. Maybe we need to bring them together into a workshop to say, what do we need to do to motivate our um, nursing graduates to get into public health or to create opportunities for them to get into public health. I think that situation is changing. I remember having those kinds of discussion with Ottawa, the Chief Nursing Officer for Ottawa Public Health. And I'm hoping that we can have even internship or some creative ways that we can uh, create opportunities for new grads to be involved in public health work. But we need to have that bigger discussion as an organization with uh, the chief nursing officers. Ruth, I, I would leave that in your able hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our next question states, uh, many of the faculty believe acute care nursing is far more important than teaching leadership, uh, DOH or system change. There is resistance to changing curriculums to address these issues. How can we affect curriculum change in nursing education? Uh, good question. Um, that's, uh, it's it's in, interesting because many of us who are in education are also those people who sit at those tables that revise curriculum. And I'm hoping that we can bring this, uh, these ideas to our different programs to create this change. But even those of us who write the, uh, who publish and write the literature that's used to teach at the different schools, I, I meant to mention actually my colleague, uh, Dr. Dusani, uh, Dr. Van Dalen Smith, uh, Cheryl in, in Toronto, and Alia in Calgary, and myself this year co edited the Lou and Stamler Community Health Nursing textbook. And we went into that uh, as an editorial team. We went with condition. We wanted a more critical. Uh, approach uh, to the whole book, every chapter author uh, took some, um, a workshop with an, and we indigenized the book. That's what we called it, indigenizing the, the textbook. So every chapter you had to deal with an indigenous issue. We created a box called the Yes But Why box. Many of you who are co-authors on that in this particular edition, the fifth edition of the book that was just released this uh, actually March uh, 2019. And that's one way that we've used to say we want this critical, we would like to see this critical piece to be part of how we teach, how we encourage students to reflect on their work. And, and I think we can each do that even in our different publication to truly promote a critical perspective because as public as health nurses or community health nurses, it's not a choice. It's an imperative for us to use a social justice lens to do the work we do. And it has to show in our publication, in the way we engage in research, and in changing those curriculum when we have the opportunities. 
and advocating for that, even when we're not sitting at the table. Hmm. Absolutely. And actually, on that note, uh, Claire Becker, the CNA president, uh, also mentioned, uh, made a mention in the comments that inequities in social justice is not limited to uh, community health nursing and should be part of all nursing practice in all settings, um, which is in line with, with your questioning, with your answer there as well, Josephine. Thank you. Uh, our next question comes from uh, our Q&A box. Could you expand on the CNA partnerships, CNA meaning the Canadian Indigenous Nurses Association partnerships with Community Health Nurses of Canada? Is there a process in place to revise the current CNA leadership position statement, which I can address? Okay, go ahead. Uh, in terms of the CNA leadership position statement, we're currently in the process of reviewing all of our position statements and identifying which ones uh, are priorities for addressing. And that is one of the um, priority position statements that we will be looking at to see what the most appropriate process is for uh, revision. Um, but I don't know if, if you wanted to speak to the CNA partnership with CHNC. Uh, CNA uh, jo uh, collaborated with uh, CHNC last year and they ran a full day pre-conference workshop in Regina. It was well attended with uh, leadership from the indigenous nursing community and uh, they signed a memorandum of understanding. I am I'm, I'm not sure where that is. Um, I think the presidents of that organization would have been better positioned in terms of some of the key strategies that have been done over the year. I'm looking forward to the, uh, getting an update at the conference next month. That's fantastic. And we also have a Ruth Schofield on the line as well who can uh, comment on that as well. Ruth? Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, yeah, CHNC continues to work very closely with Sina. Um, and again, as um, Josephine mentioned, we are also partnering with them for our conference in uh, St. John, and they'll be joining us as well. And we continue to work closely with them in other areas, uh, various projects. Um, certainly when we looked at the changes uh, in revising the um, national community health nursing standards, um, they were part of that process um, in collaborating with the changes. So, and there are other initiatives that we're working with them. So it's, it's an ongoing partnership that we see as very, critical to um, really expanding our views in um, the two-eyed, two-eyed seeing perspective that we all need to have as we move forward as nurses in Canada. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. Our next question comes regarding uh, nurse educators. How can nurse educators in educational institutions highlight the value of community health nursing in the curriculum and facilitate effective community health, health nursing placements? It's difficult to impress the value of the specialty upon nursing students when non-traditional community nursing placements are on the rise. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Ruth, you want to take it back? That's why I have Ruth here, to help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Claire, it's on the line. <laughs> she can yeah, it. yeah, this is, uh, it, it is a challenge um, with placements in, uh, to really develop the capacity. We recognize that, that there just are not enough um, opportunities within public health or even community for students to have placements. So particularly in public health, they do need to have non-traditional placements um, for them to develop some of the competencies that they need to have within public health practice. I, it's unfortunate, but that at this point is our option because the capacity isn't there for all students to have direct experience with public health. So, and, and there's mixed um, experiences. Um, some of the non-traditional placements have certainly expanded critical thinking skills within students, certainly gives them a lived experience with facing determinants of health because they're often with not-for-profit or other non-health sectors and they, um, develop a real learning and appreciation for 
um, exactly what um, Josephine was talking about today in terms of the critical social theory and the lens that really is needed to work with the population because it takes them right out of acute care into an environment that faces them with another area of practice. So the, it, there are pros and cons with the, the placements, but um, I think that is some of the reality that is currently impacting community health nursing education. Thank you, Claire, for um, your assistance there as well. Our, our next question uh, speaks to, how can acute nurses support and advocate for more resources for community health nursing? That's, that's a, yeah, that's a, an interesting one because I'm, begin, I'm beginning to see people actually talk about issues like that. I have a graduate student that approached me and I just started supervising her this past uh, year. And she works in acute care. However, she's seeing the impact of early discharge on uh, women. The, I'm talking women who have babies and they're discharged to the community and sometimes they have very limited uh, resources to deal with, whether it's early signs of depression and other issues that affect them. And that student is so passionate about it as a nurse working in a health facility. Now she wants to do her thesis examining what's available in the community to support uh, uh, women who have this early discharge, what are some of the local resources. And she's examining the, those local community resources. So I, we need to collaborate with our colleagues from acute care so they can understand uh, some of the challenges we're facing in community health nursing, and they can also be our boys. Uh, they should, we, ideally, there should be this seamless transition of uh, patients who use services and are sent home. We know what's going on now with all of the uh, chronic disease issues, whether it's people being sent home with diabetes or high blood pressure, and they're going to their homes to be cared for in the community by community health nurses. So we do need to work closely together so we can see how one as maybe one situation or challenge in one aspect of the system impacts the other and we can work as a team. Thank you, Justine. Mm -hmm. uh, our next question is related to education. Uh, it speaks to the idea that the entry to nursing education is very, the standard is very high in terms of academic standing. Mm -hmm. And are there any suggestions for schools on how, on this and how, to screen for passionate leadership qualities um, from those who understand social justice, but um, also may not uh, fit in with the standing, with the academic standings. Mm -hmm. So when you say academic standing, you're talking about the GPA that is required to get into programs? It doesn't specify the question, but I would imagine that that would be the, okay. the idea. So the, the GPA, we, we don't necessarily, I'm not sure that people want to promote the idea that you do not have the qualification to be there because you bring in so much more. But I know that pe some schools are actually doing interviews to understand people's background and what they bring, because it's not just the grade that tells us who is a good nurse, who is going to be a good nursing leader. It's, uh, we've all seen it. In our classrooms, you can have a, somebody who scores A's and A plus in, in most of the courses, but when they get to the clinical practice, they are not effective, they cannot communicate effectively with the nurses, and may not even be able to lead if they cannot uh, communicate with other people. So yes, um, I, I think programs are looking at uh, ways that they can tap into those, uh, uh, that, those kinds of skills, but also we need to look at um, not only the skills we assess when you come in, but how can we prepare you to come ready to be able to engage in the academic pursuit? Or, because you're still going to write papers, that person is still going to need to write papers and demonstrate all the other academic skills that are required. Are there programs? Uh, when I was at Dalhousie University, we ran a program that uh, helped students direct them to be prepared before they applied. And that program really helped us in recruiting from the Black community in Nova Scotia. 
this we we had a worker who worked with students to make sure they had all the uh, like academic preparation they needed before they started the nursing program. Thank you, Josephine. And uh, I also wanted to mention a comment that we received in our uh, chat from Katie Dilworth, the pre current president of CHNC. Um, Community Health Nurses of Canada is also partnering with the Chief Public Health Officers Forum subgroup on Indigenous Health health and is working on definitions on cultural safety principles of engagement uh, as a tool to apply um, moving forward. So that helps address the SENA partnership that was identified earlier. Oh. Unfortunately, although there is a lot of questions and comments um, uh, still left, we do have to wrap, uh, wrap up. However, the questions and comments um, that have not been addressed will be forwarded to uh, Josephine for uh, her to address uh, independently. Also, if you have any further questions and or comments about the presentation, Josephine has kindly shared her email contact for follow-up. And if there are any uh, follow-up, if there's any ideas on potential topics that would be of interest to you related to leadership development in community and public health, um, you will be able to, you, we will be providing Ruth Schofield's contact from CHNC uh, as she is the chair of the Community Health Nursing Leadership Institute. So um, you will be able to receive that in the follow-up email from us. I believe that will be coming in the next couple of days. Access, uh, you can access recordings of our webinars by visiting CNA's YouTube channel. The certification of participation will be emailed to the attendees along with a link to the recording of today's webinar. If you haven't already, please consider registering for the next webinar, Supporting Eco-Literacy in Nursing Practice, which will be held on Tuesday, May 28th from 12 to 1 p.m. Once again, thank you all for attending and uh, we look forward to connecting with you again soon.